Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to paint some Necrons. Uh, and I know that's going to infuriate everybody because I'm aware they're pronounced Necrons, but uh, I've always pronounced it Necrons and I'm not going to stop now. But we're going to paint these undead skeleton guys from the 41st century. Uh, so, we're going to do two versions of this. I'm going to take you through the clean version first, and that's very quick and easy. Great for getting an army of ultra shiny, scary Terminator-like skeletons uh, on the table fast. And then we're going to do a part two uh, immediately after. I'll do both in this video where we then dirty them up and I'll show you how you can take the clean version and make it look old and rusted if you want your uh, particular group of Necrons to be uh, maybe from a dynasty that uh, didn't weather the 65 million years so well. So uh, this is one of the few times you'll see me not Zenithal Prime something when I'm going to start in all metallics. Now this guy has a couple elements that probably uh, can be not metal, like some of the interior parts of the connective things I think they're starting to paint black just to make them stand apart, and I do like that, we'll touch that later. But regardless of that, uh, just priming in black is usually the best way to start with this. And we're gonna begin with a little uh, Vallejo metal color, of course, we're gonna go for some gunmetal gray and then some silver. So uh, that's where we're gonna begin. And uh, I'm going to take you through this. I'll narrate over the rest because it'll be pretty fast. And uh, we'll come back when he's all shiny. And uh, I'll show you some next steps. All right. So uh, all this is at two times speed. But uh, we're starting out with just some Vallejo Metal Color Gun Metal Gray. Uh, nice darker tone. Uh, gets him nice and shiny. You notice I'm only spraying him from about a... 45 degree angle and above uh, just to make sure that I leave some of that dark underneath. Next up, we've got some Vallejo metal color, pure silver. I'm actually going to hold him down to start out the, the first work here. Then I kind of move him around just a little bit. I am focusing in slightly on some areas that I want to be brighter, top of the head, those upper armor plate, shoulder pad things, so on and so forth. Just making sure he's popping out nice and bright there. Again, these are super quick steps. Like, you could do so many Necrons so fast. Now I've got a mix of uh, sepia and black Vallejo game ink, but you could also use anything. You could use washes from GW. You could use other types of inks, etc. And I'm just going in with a, a, a natal highlight, in other words, or a natal shadow, I guess. A revert anti-zenithal. I'm shooting the color from below. And that just adds a little bit of extra tone and texture, darkness. It mats out the lower parts of the mini, the under parts, so you don't get that metallic shine uh, coming up. So that's another, again, super fast. So now I made myself a little oil wash. Uh, this is just keeping it simple. So we're just going straight, uh, black. And now we're going to, that's nice that I'm nowhere near the camera. That's fantastic. Uh, but anyways, I've just got a big brush and I'm just slapping this on all over the place. Now, one of the benefits of using an oil wash is that you don't have to be careful and you're not going to hurt any of your work. So I just get it all in there. Make sure I touch all the parts that are, like, wet. Or, sorry, that have not flat areas. And then I take a paper... Let it sit for about mm, 5, 10 minutes, probably. Then I take a paper towel, maybe 15, something in that range. Then I take a paper towel and I just wipe away. You can also use little bits of cloth. You can use Q-tips. You can use whatever you want. You're just clearing off all that wash that sits there on the big flat spaces and leaving it in the recesses. If you're using something like a paper towel, you'll notice I keep rotating the paper towel so I'm not just smudging around stuff. You always want whatever you're using, like if it's Q-tips, make sure you clean the Q-tips and so on and so forth. But the beautiful part about an oil wash is unlike a traditional sort of shade wash, which is acrylic, and it's going to leave a layer of acrylic medium, which is going to dull out your shine just sitting all over the mini, this doesn't do that because whatever you clean up, it just take it away completely because it didn't have a chance to actually set at all so it just remains in the recesses okay so we had a little bit of a jump there uh because now you'll notice his gun is all fluorescent uh that's coming in next week's video when we talk about fluorescent paints so you'll have to wait on that part uh, i shot that in the middle of doing this because i was waiting on the oil wash to dry uh so now i'm taking some vallejo metal color silver and what I'm doing here is just hitting those highlights that I want to be really poppy and really bright. 
So a couple edges, like the top of his legs, the back part of the armor plates there, the spinal column, the top of the head, you know, just basically anything that, that I want to pop out and be kind of shiny. Now, one of the interesting parts about Vallejo Metal Color is you can consistently wipe it off your brush, leave very little, and then just feather it out. It's one of the reasons I love this paint so much. It's so versatile. With just that silver, I can actually create multiple tones and blends and get it all in there where I want it. So uh, I'm just hitting down like the side of his skull and, you know, the bottom of his, uh, the bottom of his face and those areas that are going to be really poppy. And once that's good and I've got a nice shiny boy, now it's time to get out the real shine. So this is Molotow Liquid Chrome. Oh, yes. Uh, this is the good stuff. So when you absolutely positively want the shiniest Necrons in the room, uh, except no substitutions, uh, this stuff, if you put it on there rather thick and then kind of smooth it out, you will effectively get a mirror. It will. I, I, I have a group of uh, Kill Team I did a little while back that I did in this stuff, and I was much more heavy-handed with it than I'm being here, and I can actually see my face, like my reflection in their skulls. So if you're going true, you know, Terminator... T-800s or whatever, uh, that's the way to go. You can be pretty heavy hand with it. Uh, to get the shine, you actually do need to brush apply it. It's actually a pen ink, um, but you need it to be relatively thick. You can buff it if you put it on with an airbrush, so it is a, it is a buffable thing. In other words, taking a soft piece of cloth and just kind of rubbing it, and it will shine up. Um, so that's a cool trick. But there we go, and now he's uh, a bright, shiny boy. Um, and you can see just how much that, like, the headpiece or anything else is reflecting. Those are actually my painting lights, if you look at this headpiece there, that it's reflecting out, uh, which is pretty great. So, with that done, now it's just a matter of uh, getting the in-between parts darkened. Uh, so, I have a little uh, Riley or something like that gray and a little Decay black from Scale 75, but you could use anything. You could use Abaddon black from GW or any kind of any kind of dark color like that. I happen to, I mixed in a little of Riley gray because it's a green gray and I really like it. And in general, when you're doing sort of dark black colors, it's just better not to use actual black. Um, regular black is the absence of color. It's boredom in paint form. And in general, it doesn't do you any favors. So if you can mix in some kind of color, uh, and on this sense, green is the only actual color on this guy, uh, I mixed in some that Riley right, like green gray to it to kind of give it some more life. Uh, so this is basically what we've got going on. We're just uh, hitting all these little armor spots in between. All the skeletal frame that isn't a shiny armor piece is being blacked out. And what that's going to be there to do is to make everything else more contrasted. Uh, it's a pretty quick, simple process because these, these guys have very little joints. Some of the bigger guys in this set have uh, a lot more exposed skeleton or more complicated joints, but these guys are real easy. So there we go. Uh, with that, we're you know all set if what we're aiming at is sort of the shiny type of, of uh, Necron. The important part of blacking out these individual uh, joints and stuff, you know, this is something they've started doing recently. If you look at the uh, newest jobs on the the uh, the models that are out there for this re-release, I actually think it's a really good idea in much the same way as sort of blacking out the areas in between the Stormcast armor helps to set off the color. That extra bit of contrast by having those things be darker really helps. Now, if you really want to spend the time, you can go in there like they do, and you can put little edge highlights on things. I'm not going to do that because we're not aiming at that level of a job here. You know, we got to put a lot of these little little dudes on the table. But you can see how we get something that's really shiny, really reflective, and just all in all is going to look, you know, pretty awesome marching across in a group. That Molotow, when it dries, I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that's actually like a real reflection of my ceiling lights. Like, it reflects like a mirror. So that's why I use it for those high highlights. It just really, 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 really reflects pure, uh, almost mirror-like sheen. So it's pretty amazing. You can always smooth it back over with a little bit of the silver, which is still bright, but not as sort of obnoxious. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So that's that guy. Now, if you're to the point where you're happy with this kind of a job, then you're done. Uh, obviously, like I said, we'll, the gun will be next week and how we do the uh, 
the fluorescence, you know, so you would take it to that level. Um, and this guy would be ready to go. Now, if, however, you want it to be a little dirtier, well then, stay tuned for part two, which is, we're gonna roll right into, I'm gonna do this as one video. So, now we're gonna dirty this guy up, um, and I'm gonna take this in stages. So you can kind of jump off this train wherever you want. Uh, because you can have him be just slightly dirty, or you can have him be really, really messed up. And uh, by the end, we'll take him to sort of really messed up, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay? So, with that, uh, back to some narration and some high-speed video. So now that we made him shiny, it's time to mess it up. And we're going to do this with the paint you see on screen right now. And I'll, I'll show him again in turn. But I'm starting, and I'm actually going to do this to where you can jump off of this car, this, this little wagon, at any point you want. So I'm starting with just some basic Agrax Earthshade. The reason I'm using Agrax is because, one, it's black-brown. Two, Agrax is super weak. It is the weakest of the, the sort of three primary shades of Nuln, uh, uh, Sepia, and Agrax. And you'll notice I'm just pushing it into the shadow areas. Uh, this can be a good step even if you don't want them very dirty because it will make the miniature more interesting. So I'm just always moving the brush, keeping it moving quickly, and I'm just touching mainly the transition point between the midtone and the most shadowed area. And it just adds a nice little extra color in there. Makes them look a little bit old, like there's a little bit of grime on there. But that's the minorest step. Now I've got some Agreros Dunes, uh, which is a contrast paint, a very nice brown contrast paint, one of, my, one of my favorites in the range. And what I'm doing here is, again, just reinforcing, starting in the shadows, hitting a lot of those areas. You notice I don't let anything pool. I don't let anything settle. I'm always pushing around the paint and making sure. This is one of the keys to washes and contrast paints and everything. I see a lot of people slop their brush in there and then just go on and stop, like one smooth stroke. That's not how you want to apply a wash, no matter what you're doing, or a contrast paint or anything. You want to be putting an amount on and then pushing it all over the miniature with your brush. Like, you notice how relatively little I go back to the, the paint. But now he's starting to look a little more rusty. Still just tinted, like maybe he's old metal. So if you just want something with a little more character, a little more flavor, a little bit of age, that's where you go. Now we've got smoke, dry rust, and pure rust. And this is where we're going to get into the real... The real deal weathering. So I start with a smoke, which is a wonderful color from Vallejo, useful for like a million things. Uh, but now I'm going with a little bit heavier application, trying to really turn those deeper shadows, those edges, a lot of different areas that catch my interest uh, a darker brown. I'm especially focusing on some of these, uh, the, new, uh, the new models have actual like scratches and dents in them. So you can actually go and put brown or rust or you know something in those and it'll look like it's appropriate to be in that area so that's what you see me doing right there on the shoulder you can see how that gathered in that recess that damaged uh, uh you know wound on his armor as it were now i'm taking the dry rust and i'm stippling it over some of those areas still wet it's fine like i just went straight from one to the other and you notice with both the smoke and this i'm moving my brush in a much more stippling fashion so I'm stabbing the miniature. I'm not just uh, I'm not just wiping it around. Instead, I want there to be pattern. I want there to be texture. I want there to be some paint buildup, right? Because that's going to be a much more realistic take on the thing. Uh, rust is very random. I'm not thinking a whole lot while I'm doing this. This is all Zen and the art of rusting Necrons. Okay, where I'm just dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it, figuring out what looks good. And finally here, we're going to get into the orange. And this is a, you know, this is a touchy section. So the more of this you use, it's instantly going to look like older metal. Okay, like really heavily rusted. And you'll notice I tend to focus the orange on things like the edges. Uh, the most exposed areas, the, the things like that. So you'll see me trace along a lot of edges and almost pseudo edge highlight with it. Now, not really. I'm not going for some smooth thing where i'm tracing like we normally do with edge highlighting instead what i'm doing is i'm stippling it along edges and stuff like that right and just adding it in you notice that as i go as i work the paint off the brush it starts to get a little more frayed i still keep stabbing because then i get these nice interesting patterns finally i need to bring that all together so i'm going to go back into my agrax that first step and i'm just going to go 
hog wild. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything, but I'm hitting a lot of this guy. Uh, I'll state that, yeah, I, and I talk about this in just a moment, but you want to make sure you mat all this out after you're done. You need to get rid of that bright, shiny metallic finish. If you follow the exact steps I did, go super shiny first and then bring it down. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. So, so that brings moving us that to around, the uh, you and can see let him he's dry. all rusted out. He's all set. And, uh, you know, looks a little bit more battle-worn at this point. So there's lots of different colors you can add. Obviously, I use those particular browns. There's nothing special about the particular ones that I used. You could use any. Replace it with seraphim sepia. Replace it with lots of different contrast colors or inks or anything like that. One thing that I did do afterward was hit the whole thing with a coat of ultra matte varnish. Uh, because you don't want to leave those super shiny areas on something that's, uh, that's all rusted out. So the, the metal needs to get older as well you can still have some parts that when hit by direct light like down here on the leg that will shine but they're much more dull especially in reality than they were before uh but there you go so whether you're looking for some clean shiny little uh skeleton warriors in the 41st millennium or whether you're looking for uh, uh some rusty crusty goodness either way hopefully this tutorial will help you out uh, so there you go with that uh, I'll put up some final photos of them here after I'm done but I want to say thank you very much for watching this give it a like if this was helpful to you for any of your schemes uh, but as always I very much appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time <laughs>